My beer fight player choice this week is a film that for decades topped the sight and sound poll of the best movies of all time before finally being toppled by Hitchcock's Vertigo. A retrospective investigation of the life of a charismatic media mogul, it's a film that was simply marketed on release with the phrase, it's terrific, an assessment with which it's hard to disagree more than 80 years on. Citizen Kane. Charles, I think I should remind you of a fact that you seem to have forgotten. Yes. That you are yourself one of the largest individual stockholders in the public transit company. The trouble is you don't realize you're talking to two people as Charles Foster Kane, who owns 82,364 shares of public transit preferred. You see, I do have a general idea of my holdings. I sympathize with you. Charles Foster Kane is a scoundrel. His paper should be run out of town. A committee should be formed to boycott him. You may, if you can form such a committee, put me down for a contribution of $1,000. My time's On the other hand, I am the publisher of the Enquirer. As such, it's my duty, and I'll let you in on a little secret. It's also my pleasure to see to it that decent, hard-working people in this community aren't robbed blind by a pack of money-mad pirates just because they haven't anybody to look after their interests. Exactly who wrote the screenplay for Orson Welles' debut feature, which he directed and starred in, remains a source of some controversy. The recent biopic Mank reminds us that in Herman Mankiewicz's Oscar acceptance speech, he said he received the award in the manner in which the screenplay was written, which is to say, in the absence of Orson Welles. Yet Welles' fingerprints are all over the script, for which he too won an Oscar, the only win from nine nominations, including Best Picture, which went to How Green Was My Valley. The fact that Kane didn't sweep the Oscars and underperformed at the box office is often attributed to campaigns against the film by William Randolph Hearst, the media baron on whom the character of Charles Foster Kane was allegedly based. Welles would later tell a story about meeting Hearst in an elevator on the night of the film's San Francisco opening and offering him a ticket to the show. When Hearst didn't answer, Wells said, well, Mr. Kane would have come. And that's the difference between the two people because Charles Foster Kane had enough class to have gone. Despite Hearst's attempts to kill the film, Citizen Kane would become a milestone of cinema. Celebrated for the deep focus photography of Greg Toland, who famously recalled teaching Wells how to direct by showing him John Ford's stagecoach. The brilliance of its technical invention, a lightning flash used to give the illusion of a camera passing through glass, the dexterity of Robert Wise's editing, and the majesty of Bernard Herrmann's score. It's a film filled with iconic motifs, from the dropped snow globe to the ever-expanding breakfast table, all of which would be referenced and ripped off by generations of directors to come. It's also very funny, a quality of Wells' work that is too often overlooked. He may have been a magician, but he was also a jester. Is this the greatest film ever made? Well, as Orson himself would have said, probably. Rosebud.